G'day, I'm Derek Hilton. I'm back out in the office again today. A bit windy, but we'll cope with that, I'm sure. Now, we're here to talk about accessories. The things we buy that we hope will help us with our images. Now, my first one is something I absolutely love. Had it for three weeks and I've wanted something like this ever since I bought my first DSLR. Sort of had a... Uh, had it in mind myself to make one back then, six years ago, but I never got around to it. But here it is. I've got one today, the Cotton Carrier, and I'm absolutely loving it. It's the best thing I've bought, besides something else that we'll talk about in a minute. So yes, they are, everything fits really snug. You've got to go on the angle. It's got a slots on the side so that when it, you bring it back down to there, it won't come up, it won't come out. So I'm bending over all the time. It has this strap to stop it flapping around when you're bending over, or especially when I'm going over logs across the creeks. Um, I'll whack that on, but normally I'm not worrying about it because it's pretty secure anyway and it doesn't slap, there's no slapping. So it's really good. Uh, you get a little bit embarrassed when people see in the bush with it on. Uh, it does feel a little bit, uh, yeah, a bit strange. It probably looks a bit strange to people, especially when you have the flash and the flash extender on. So I'm loving this. It's fantastic. You're getting stuff out of your bag on the ground. It's fine. I carry the XF300 that you're looking at me through right now, the beautiful camera, uh, with, on a tripod, which is a big, heavy, luggy thing, on my shoulder, and this with the flash on and all that, doesn't get in the way. It's beautiful, and I've got this set as high as I possibly can, so it's nice and comfy and it's not hitting my doodle. So that's my first accessory that I've uh, bought that was quite expensive and I'm loving it and the price didn't, doesn't really come into it anymore. It's fantastic. Now there's also a little pouch here you're probably thinking about. What's in the pouch? Well, let's have a look. Now, when you buy this and you pull it out of the box, there's no mention of a rain cover, which is a great, little piece um, and wear it as a hat if you're uh, inclined to which is one of those dad's jokes again <laughs> but um, it's awesome if it starts drizzling it might have been all right when you first started out on your trail and it starts raining you just chuck the cover on give it a pull up and it's fine now I it will even stretch out and cover over when I've got the flash on. So that's another great little accessory that came with it. And it's also good to put the Allen key in. Any other little bits and pieces. It's not a lot of room there, but it just helps out. Probably even put a battery in there if you wanted for your camera. So that's a cotton carrier. It's awesome. I recommend you go and get one if you're going to be hiking out in the scrub or um, anywhere with your photography. I'm going to use it for a wedding shoot that I've got coming up in November and might look out of, uh, out of place, <laughs> but it's going to be awesome for me not to worry about putting it down on the ground all the time. I can just shove it there and I can do other bits and pieces and get on with my work. Now. Another fantastic tool to buy for wildlife photography, especially out in the forest, which I've talked about in my other reviews, is the flash extender. Now this is a brand newie, my other one. If you've watched any of my other reviews, I had a crack in it. Well, that crack went further and further until it absolutely destroyed a couple of weeks ago. So I've replaced it. Now these have actually come down in price dramatically. I forgot to check before I shot out into the bush how much I paid for it, but it was somewhere around just under $60. Uh, 
Uh, my original one was $80 and that's delivered from B&H from America. So it's a cheap thing to buy and it boosts up the power of your flash dramatically. It just throws out a beam of light uh, quite a long distance, depends on what camera you have, what ISO camera will let you go up to before you get noise. 7D Mark II. I can go to 1000 and 2000 ISO, so that allows this flash to, uh, I, I can get the benefit of all of its reach with uh, those high ISOs. Now, you've got to keep in mind when you're using these that you have to adjust the belt. So your position of where it sits on the flash. Now, generally I have that up here. You can see these um, moulds that come out like that. I use them as a guide for the edge of, of the flash. So I have them up about nearly 10 mil that is. Yeah, about 10 millimetres so that it's right on the subject. If you have that back level, it'll be lower than your subject and the top will be black because there's no flash there. It only has, a, a, depends on the distance because it does open up as it goes out. But generally, let's talk about four meters. It'll be a circle of light about a meter round. So that's the thing you have to keep in mind about these when you're putting them on to your flash, that you need it just to have a quick check. Um, you know, I don't need to check anymore. I know it, I judge it pretty accurately and I never had a problem. But when you first start out, you need to uh, work that because you'll be going, oh, why isn't it on the subject? Why is it so low? That's why. So you just need to adjust it in and out until you get it right. So yep, recommend you get one of these if you're a wildlife photographer. Even if you're down in the open and it's an overcast day and you're down at a dam, say, and you've got birds in the water and you want to take photos of them, they might be trying to, like a crane or something like that, it's going to about to strike to get a frog and it's too dark, this will help you out enormously as long as you're not too far away. So that's the flash extender and that's the better beamer. Now I bought an extra one this time just in case I break that one and they were nine, oh, sorry, it was ten dollars. Uh, good in, another good investment for the future I'll break that one which could happen and what else have we got LED light and this is the Mimic uh, 360 so that's 360 LEDs I use this a lot not just for filming which I should have it on at the minute but I need to show you what it's about it just helps take all the shadows off off the face and stuff and um, uh, I do use it as a main light when I can get up close to animals so two meters away it's fantastic it lights up the scene really well but I don't just use this for filming I use it for taking photo <coughs> photographs as well uh, a lot of some of the subjects that I film, so, say a, a grey fantail building a nest, bringing up its young, they don't mind you being up close. So I can use that to take photos when they're in a dark environment. They've got overhanging branches and the light doesn't come in there. Same for filming. And I also use it for taking photographs of the antichinus, the agile antichinus. So I have a spot where I've got quite a few that uh, regularly come to this particular log and it's quite a dark environment and I've probably yeah, if you've seen my other reviews and stuff you probably already know what I'm talking about so this helps with the focusing put it on full bore when the animal turns up and the 7D Mark II will focus without a problem otherwise it'd be struggling to get uh, good accurate focusing because my subjects very similar color to the logs that it goes on on the dead logs like this so that's great another great thing it's good for that I only just worked out not long ago 
Now, I'm not a fan of DSLRs for using to film with. For a lot of reasons, and if you look at some of my other reviews, I've already had whinges about bits and pieces. Too expensive to buy extras, you know. But, if I do need it, and I've got my little my mic microphone there, little, little cheapy, I just slot it into these grooves here that are meant for the mount, so you can mount your, uh, your flash in all different ways like that or whatever. But look at that, it's off the camera now, it's away from the camera, so we can now, with the 7D Mark II, its autofocus does come up on the speaker if you have it on top of your uh, where your flash goes. So it still picks it up. I've got the 75 to 300 millimeter L lens, but it's still here the focus. This is pretty sensitive and it picks it up. So on there, the uh, lead reaches in nicely and it's off the camera quite a bit. We have a look. So you can see it's away quite a lot and it's enough that you don't pick up any noise. You could probably even have a stabiliser on that and it wouldn't pick it up. But we usually turn that off anyway, we don't need it. So there you go, there's a few. Now I've got a lot more stuff to show you, including some stuff I wish I wouldn't have bought. Now I have something that I need to buy straight away and that's a razor. Another accessory and the razor's for having a shave. So I'm going to go home, have a shave and I'll be back in a few minutes with some more stuff. Well I'm back and I'm shaving. Now the reason why I don't shave much is because women flock around me like seagulls when I have a shave because I look 10 years younger. So I have to be careful, I'm a married man, can't have those sort of things going on. So there you go. Actually, that's a lie. I just can't be bothered shaving, that's all. Bit lazy. Well, we're back to talk about accessories. Now, one of the accessories I wish I hadn't bought. Now that's a stabiliser vest. Don't know why I bought it. Well, I do. I actually bought it for a job. It was a wedding reception wanted a uh, promotional video and I had some plans f to, to, for that, you know, how to go about it and was really excited about doing it and it didn't happen. Well, part of those plans were I needed the stabiliser vest to walk in and out of, this, of the venue. So the job didn't eventuate, so it sits in the cupboard $500 worth, sits in the cupboard, does nothing. Don't really need it for my wildlife documentaries. Maybe, might do a bit of a walk through the forest or something with it on, but otherwise, actually hate the thing. It's terrible to use, so heavy. Uh, bought on eBay, like I said, for $500. It's uh, supposed to be all light and all that, but it is quite heavy. Now I use the XF300 on it. Uh, so here's a little bit of footage I've taken of how to set it up. I'll put it on the end of the bench, put a peg in, in a hole, sit the stabiliser arm on and uh, balance everything up. Now that can take 10 minutes or so to get that all levelled up in every direction, in every angle it has to be uh, perfectly balanced. So when you put on the vest there's still a little bit of adjusting to go. Now uh, it only takes half an hour of walking around with this vest on and I am absolutely exhausted. It just wears me out because of the weight and trying to keep it balanced. You've still got to hold it with one finger so you've got you're holding handle so you, you can move it around without influencing it but you still got to put your fingers just underneath the camera so that you can turn it or stop it from turning because it wants to turn in different directions so you just hold it stable with your fingers just very lightly but it's one of the things that just sits in the cupboard and will probably hardly ever get used and it, I wish I wouldn't have bought it 
So something else that I wish I wouldn't have bought years ago, and that's wireless triggering for the flash so I can have it off the camera at a fair distance. Photographing uh, birds nesting. Some birds don't like you to be up it's close to them so you've got to stand back. So wireless triggering is what you need. Now before I bought this one which is the Pixel King uh, I had a, an old cheapie $90 for the trigger and uh, the remote thing. They uh, only had the TTL mode, which means you only get 200 or 250 sync speed with your shutter. Uh, so there's no controls. So I bought a Pixel King. Now they're only a little bit dearer. I think they were $70 each. I think it worked out too. But this is a really good investment because I researched them properly this time. I get full um, manual controls so I can have high speed sync of whatever shutter speed I like. So they were an awesome investment. Pixel King, there's a, that, that was at the time they were the only ones that would give you that sort of um, control. Uh, I think the Pocket Wizards, which were about $500 for a set like that, um, they do the same, but I didn't want to spend that much money on them. But they work really well and I'm happy with them. Uh, the flash will go to sleep and you can't wake it up unfortunately so you've got to waste batteries by having take off the sleep mode for your flash. Now speaking of flashes the grey fung oh, what do you call it? Spear! White spear! They fit on the flash head and you use it as a diffuser. Now I haven't had much time to use this yet. I've had it for three weeks. But I've done a lot of research before I bought it and I'm excited about using it. Like I said before, I'm doing a wedding shoot in November for a friend of mine and this is going to be fantastic for that. Now why, how these work is, got the dome on the top, just to diffuse um, the bounce because uh, this bounces in all directions it comes out of here it's quite uh, fun to watch it's got to watch you don't blind yourself because you have the whole way around the flash comes out as well as going out through the top as well and the big advantage is with these light up a lot more area so if you've got a group photograph inside a building uh, it'll get quite a lot of people in, or all of them in. And also it cuts down the amount of shadows behind them. It's really light, if you do get any shadow it's very light. I've had a bit of a play with my family who were quite pissed off that I was taking photos of them. But um, learned a little bit that uh, it's what Grey Fung says it does. So the photographs are looking fantastic, nice and soft. It's not a harsh light, it's really good. And I'll be looking forward to doing a bit more experimenting with that. So they're really good. And I also can use this to diffuse um, wildlife photography too, if I'm up really close, doing real close-ups to little insects or something like that. This is going to be handy for that, so I'll have a play with that as well. Now, uh, speaking of close-ups, where is it? Where are they? Oh, it's over here. 7D Mark II, bought the kit lens for it. That is so quiet. I saw a review on it online. Um, it's only cheapy, but this is Canon's third model of this, I think. And you can't hear the focusing, and you can't hear the stabilizing. It's really quiet. Probably hear the wind on the mic at the minute picked up again. So this is the oh, I can't remember what it is, read on it. Yeah. 18 to 55 millimeter. Uh, so it's quite wide, it's pretty good. I'm happy with it. But what this will get used for a lot is for close-ups. Mm -hmm. What I've done is I bought a close-up 
lens quite a few years ago and lucky it's the same size uh, on the thread and everything so that is the 250D close up lens so you can get up really close to your little insects and this will focus um, at 50 millimetres away I think I'm pretty sure it was, oh no, 25 millimetres so you can be an inch if you're in uh, imperial measurements an inch away from your subject so you can get really close up with that and I've had a bit of a play and it's really good uh, I had it on my other zoom lens uh, a standard lens, a 70 to 300 millimetre lens but I made a mistake uh, for zoom, big zoom lenses you needed a different one, I think it was 500 or something like that, where a 250 is meant for a wider lens, not so much a zoom lens, so the close-up. So this matches up beautifully now, so that's really good. And I'm happy that they, that I've got them. Now, uh, while we're on lenses and stuff like that, long exposures. That's the black glass, the uh, 400, the ND filter 400. Don't get much opportunity to do landscapes up in the Dandenong Ranges. Here's a lot of open space, but I bought this more for um, at the beach. Just get the waves coming up around the rocks, and if you get the right type of rock uh, with this combined with one of these filters on the outside, not this one, but I use a real clear one. And because they're a plastic, they make the, uh, the rocks uh, texture stand out more for some reason. Um, you see online when, when you see those sort of long exposures during the day uh, with that filter, uh, combined with them, they're absolutely magical Unfortunately for me, haven't found the right rocks yet. Had lots of plays in different areas, just can't find the right instance. Um, I've got a photograph here of this creek that had a bit of rubbish in there, a bit of wire and stuff in the middle there, water running over it. It come out looking sharp and uh, yeah, quite, quite um, different looking, that's for sure. So they're what you use when you use using a filter for daytime long exposures so you use those two together as a combination and they come out with a beautiful looking uh, bit of artwork I've got lots of other filters just normal ND filters I have the polarizing lens don't get to use it a lot um, it's good for cutting down on glare, but also adds a lot more colour saturation. I used to use this on my 25 to 100 millimetre uh, L lens for the Canon 5D Mark II. And I created something called brush strokes. And here's a photo to explain it. Now that's used by using a really slow shutter speed and striking camera downwards downwards motion um, and you need to have the polarizer on because I have to have a really um, the shutter wide open for it and use a flash right at the end so second curtain uh, flash so that it flashes right at the end of my stroke so that my subject is lit up and you can see uh, it's only slight wiping from leaves and stuff that as I've come down. So just a great effect and I love it and you need the polarizer to do that because you want a very uh, shallow depth of field and everything for it to work properly. So that's great for that. Don't use it for much else really. What else have we got? Now something else came with the XF300 and I would have bought one of these anyway, and that's the Porter Bruce waterproof cover. This is fantastic. It's a wet suit for your, um, that fits over the front of the lens, so it's 
like a wetsuit material, fits over, nice and snug, water can't get in. And I like to have the camera up high when I've got it like that so that water doesn't drip down onto the onto the and into the lens itself. Just keep it on slide angle down. And right, got the little window so you can see that things are still working. That's a really good jacket. If I'm a bit worried that it might rain while I'm walking, put it on straight away and I know I won't get caught out. This is snake cam. I use it um, every now and then to check out whether uh, things, the animals I'm searching for are nesting in hollow logs or whatever. It's really good to check them out. I use it for um, checking on birds that nest in burrows, like the spotted puddle oak. Uh, all sorts of different applications. Can't use it as footage because it's crap uh, resolution and everything, but it really doesn't matter. I just like to see what's happening when I can't physically see inside a log or in the hole in the tree or whatever. This is a really good tool for nature photography just to uh, find out whether it's worthwhile hanging around that there is something there. Now, to finish up with, the, uh, these lens hoods, never been a fan of them. They, when you get like this, isn't it? it's a bit of a brag because it makes the lens look heaps longer and bigger. So the girls are around, you know, got me big lens, have a bit of a brag. Yeah, you don't use them. I don't use it much. It's only for something that's backlit. Yeah, the light might be coming in the side and that's just to stop lens flares and stuff like that. That's all they're for. They come with your lens when you buy them, if you buy L lenses. Now I lost the cap on this. So I put this on. This is a really good one because it's a shaft one, not like the uh, 24 to 100 uh, lens that I have. It's more of a cutout. It's not very high, so it's, it's useless. I don't use it very often. There's only once I've ever uh, used it. Had a little bit of light coming through as I was trying to photograph, uh, film this bird that was um, getting fed, feeding its chicks in the grass, low down on the ground, and the light just shone in, so I put it on. That's the only time I've ever used it. But this one, getting back to this one, this has been fantastic because I let, lost the lens cover. This stops branches and twigs and bits. Of, Bracken and stuff like that scratching the lens keeps everything away. So I haven't bothered buying a lens cap for it because this protects it really well. So if you can get your hands on one, if you're like me, you walk through the scrub a lot. Uh, it's fantastic. It just your lens just stays clean because it's so long and it's a good brand. So there you go. That's that. Now there's something else I forgot about with my... Here it is. Now that's our better beamer with the lens I forgot to mention. That these are a lethal weapon. <laughs> Got to be careful with them. Uh, if you put your camera down, pointing up, or uh, sitting down, and the directly at the sun, it'll melt your lens on your flash. It'll just burn it really quick. Now these are good for starting fires, um, and I wish I could demonstrate that for you, but the sun's hidden in amongst the clouds up there. These, you can strike um, on, just put it onto a bit of material, and as instantly as you put it onto your material, it starts burning straight away. It's not like a magnifying glass where you've got to try and find the perfect spot. You can get this really quick. It's only a matter of split seconds and it starts a fire. So it's a good tool if you're going hiking for uh, days like I did with, at Wilson's Prom four day hike. Not that you're allowed to start fires in Wilson's Promontory, but if you're somewhere where you, you need to um, make a fire for the night and you're allowed to, these are awesome, as long as you've got uh, good sunlight. So that's all I've got for you. Bit of a look at accessories that I've got and some of the crap that I bought. And uh, if you want to subscribe and 
You can have a look at uh, some, anything else that comes along that I do. Just subscribe and you'll get notification. Now, just down there is a little icon with a cow on it. That'll take you to my channel. You can have a look at all the other things I've been doing. Like practicing at making wildlife documentaries and the odd review. Alright, I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.